So speaking of old Tennessee wrestling fans, Smoky Mountain Wrestling got more publicity last week on network television than it has since we were on the air. Um, with the WWE Treasure Show, I thought we I watched the Piper biography. We talked about that on the drive through, but uh, eleven o'clock is too late for me these days. So I I had to catch up with that on the DVR. But did you did you get to watch it or did you ever find it? You were you were lost. No. In, well, they, they air one after the other, and I didn't DVR either of them last week, so I haven't seen the Piper biography or Hidden Treasures. Well, they're, or they're repeating Lost them treasures. constantly. Are Just, they? Yes. I went through the DVR, and it was all one. I mean, not DVR, the, the TV guide on the remote. And it was a bunch of other crap. I didn't see any. You sound like me now. I went through the thing on the... Well, every time I, they, uh, especially they rerun the previous week's editions uh, on Sundays before they run the new editions. Okay, so I'll but get I've it this week. i them on other, other days as well. You're just not looking in the right place. Anyway, um, there was a bunch of, of uh, well, obviously they interviewed Taker and uh, Kane, Glenn, and, but even to hear Stephanie McMahon say Smoky Mountain Wrestling, uh, but they've used footage of their first match in Knoxville at the Super Bowl 95, which was in August. But the, the premise of the, for the WWE treasures program was that they were going to find the original Unibom outfit that he wore. Cause Kane at that time, Glenn was Unibom. So the original Unibom outfit that he wore in that match that they had the tape of and et cetera. And of course, Glenn uh, I don't know where he he learned at an early age to be to save his wrestling memorabilia and documents and things and such. Where could he have been in an atmosphere where that would have been taught? But anyway, he had it in his garage, uh, or not his actually a, a, a looks like a storage apartment area over his garage. But he had all his stuff, and when he brought it out, I hadn't seen that thing in person in twenty five years, but. It, it, it gave me a chuckle when he said, this is not just the original Unibomb outfit. This is the only Unibomb outfit. Because that, and that, the, the Unibomb outfit was also, what was he in Puerto Rico? Was it Doomsday? Yeah, I think so. Yes, that was also the original Doomsday outfit that nobody was looking for. Because Doomsday didn't get over. Um, but when he was working Puerto Rico for Dutch... Mantell, who was booking at that time, he was doomsday and had the Unibom outfit on because he'd already had it made. Um, and it was a Lord Humongous, you know, homage slash ripoff. And how many Humonguses had there been? Um, and, and Sid at one point before he was really Sid was Humongous. That's any time you got a big guy especially that was green because that gimmick led itself to, can he do a power bomb and a choke slam and look big and not sell a lot? You know, that was the gimmick to put on him. So that's what Dutch was doing to give Glenn some experience down there. And when he told me about him, you know, I, I loved the concept of having Glenn as the, as the person, but doomsday, eh, that was when, the Unabomber was still at large and, you know, was in the news and et cetera. So, okay, what about power bomb Unabomb? And the power, his power bomb became the Unabomb. And I just, I never put a B at the end of it, but that's something that uh, WWE treasures and most people don't pick up on. There was never actually officially a B at the end of Unabomb. He ended with an M. Uh, but so it, since it wasn't really a change in the gimmick, it was just a change in the name. He could do everything he had been doing. He could wear the same shit that he already had. Uh, because it's not like, as I've referenced many times when people give, put up screenshots of the Stormtrooper in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, I wasn't buying anybody's shit except the Heavenly Bodies. Everybody else was on their own. I got Holly a robe one time. Uh, but anyway, so that's, and, and, the uh, also the Kane or ah, shit Glenn Unibom had just come into Smoky Mountain the first time that we got a chance to get dates on The Undertaker, and so that's why I didn't put them together at that time because I thought it was too early. Because I mean, you had to put The Undertaker over, not say he would have demanded not to do a job, but 
in that instance, you, you, people see the undertaker, he needs to be on the winning side. Right. And it, I knew that Glenn was going to be a future opponent, but the first dates that we got on taker were a two night of Friday and Saturday night in Pikeville, Kentucky for the bluegrass brawl and Johnson city, Tennessee at freedom hall. And really the reason why we got him was for the bluegrass brawl. That was the third year in a row that we were going to be there. We'd sold out the previous two turn people practice. Well, we didn't turn any away. We just put more in than we were supposed to. And how do you follow that three years in a row? That's when Mark was living in Nashville. Asking, can we get taker on his off day? And he agreed to do that. And then he, on the way back down the road, made Johnson city at freedom hall. And I had put him in six mans at that point so that he could, he could be there. We could advertise him. The people could see him. He could come in and do his stuff. Everybody else could do their shit while he didn't get hurt. And then he could come in and make a comeback and then whatever. And we put with him with bullet, Bob Armstrong and myself and the gangsters, our top angle. Right. But by that August, Glenn had been there and had been working with all those guys for almost eight months. And he'd been in the ring with the Rock and Roll Express. He'd been partners with Al Snow and, you know, had had experience working with all the, the experienced guys in Smoky Mountain. So when I got a chance that for the Super Bowl event, I definitely wanted Undertaker. He hadn't been to Knoxville. We did sell out, by the way, in Pikeville, and we did our record house in Johnson City. But that's when I wanted to pull the trigger on having their first match because now people are starting to look at Glenn. He's had more experience. He feels better in the gimmick. And at the same time, now I can, for my business purposes, I can beat Unibomb. If it's the Undertaker, it does. It is not like that kills him. And that's a huge attraction for a match on on that show, which ended up being a sellout. So, and obviously that was the point also where he had gotten ready to where I don't know if he if if he had just come from Puerto Rico and you know six weeks later he's having a match with the Undertaker earlier that year if the response would have been as favorable because he still really needed to get the benefit of of not only. Puerto Rico, you had some some veterans, but he was working with a lot of guys in Knoxville who were either working directly with, you know, WWE talent or had been involved with the company. So it it was better that he had that six months to really get that experience before he got in the ring first time with Mark. And then as soon as that happened, instantly, you know, I knew he would be a star in whatever he ended up doing i was mortified when i heard about isaac yankum as we've talked about and i wasn't too much happier about fake diesel but you know he, they were already as soon as that match happened in in august i knew they would be bringing him up sooner than later and they did 